Chapter 3. Shut up and draw. Okay, so this is the third installment of my regular progress reports on my own little uh, independent production. If you recall, the first episode was called Nothing, because I didn't really have anything. And the second episode, I went from nothing to something. And now the third chapter is called Shut Up and Draw. And that's precisely what I did. And um, I sort of was thinking that uh, the views uh, that I'm getting on Instagram and and, uh, and YouTube, they're a little lower than what I was sort of anticipating. And I suspect it's because I don't have any uh, images to go with my um, my title page. I sort of took some of the drawings that I did and uh, tried different different uh, variations to see which one I like the most here. So these are the three that I kind of ended up with. And let's go through the bullet points for this episode. Um, basically, uh, I'm going to talk about freelance work. Uh, I had to take a week off. Uh, and do some some uh, freelance work. I you know I I thought I would take the opportunity to to uh, you know to bank a little bit of money so that I could uh, sort of continue working on my own stuff. I don't have to talk about that any more than that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my thumbnails because I I finished the first pass of the thumbnails from the start to the finish of the whole story, and that took the better part of a week. So I'm trying to treat this like a regular job, even though I'm not getting paid like a regular job, but I'm still trying to, I'm still approaching it um, with the same kind of, um, you know, the structure that I would have if I'm actually doing a real job. So I wake up in the morning, I try to put a good eight hour day in, and I try to put like a 40 hour week together. And then I'll go through my comment section at the end. I, I've got another little section I'm going to introduce called Around the Internet, where I'll sort of talk about some notable things around the internet. And at the end, I'll mention that I'm I'm looking for a female voice actor. Actually, I don't need to talk about that, but uh, if there's any female voice actors out there that want to help me do a scratch track, just reach out to me directly. You know, you can just uh, DM me and uh, let's see kind of, you know, what we can do. I'm not sure I can really pay any money right now, but uh, let's, you know, start off with the scratch track and see where we go from there. Okay, so let's get right into the thumbnails. Like I said, I finished the first pass of the thumbnails from start to finish. So now I, I can actually see what this thing is shaping up like. I, you know, I scanned my thumbnails into Photoshop. Uh, I was just working on regular Xerox paper. And, and then I, you know, did this little time lapse of um, copying and pasting all the frames uh, into my uh, Photoshop document. Uh, I mentioned this in the last episode, but... The Photoshop document is, it, it, this is ultimately where I'm going to start doing my layouts. So it's basically uh, 1920 by 1080. It's f uh, 4K across, 16-bit. Uh, I leave a little space around the edges in case I need to um, expand the frame out a little bit or do a camera move or something like that. But basically, um, the purpose of, uh, of this is just getting the all the information from the paper into my computer and format it in a document that I'm going to return back to afterwards. Let's go back to the thumbnails. So this uh, little short I'm doing is called Permanent Damage. And it starts off, it's uh, a black frame, and you'll hear some uh, sound effects over the black frame. It'll be um, horns honking, cars screeching, uh, people yelling, um, you know, all this stuff will, will be happening over a black screen. And then we cut to this frame. Uh, it's a first person uh, hand on a wheel, somebody driving a car, and there's cars swerving out of the way. And this guy, um, you can see the hand sort of um, turning the wheel this way, and then he swerves the other way. And the cars are kind of swerving around him, trying to avoid him. And this guy gives him the, he gives him the, like, the fuck you finger right there, as you would. And the girl in the passenger seat uh, has got this scared expression on her face. And she looks over, and, and she's pretty much outraged. And then we cut to the driver. Uh, let's just call him Peter. And he's driving the car, and she gives him, like, that scornful look there. And we cut to him. So he looks around. They're in a different environment. The girl is in the other room, and, and she's having some conversation with him about him drifting off, you know, in the middle of conversation or 
in the middle of driving. This is the exterior shot here of the building. It's another shot. She kind of walks through by the window here. She continues talking to him. And in the middle of the conversation, he drifts off again. I mean, this is the the idea of the story is that he sort of, he kind of drifts off into like different scenarios is the idea. And this particular scenario is a younger version of him. It's like a 13-year-old version of him. And he's in uh, his basement of his house and he does a little bong hit there. Uh, another angle on him doing a bong hit. Meanwhile, somebody comes in uh, into frame and uh, approaches the window and opens the window and, and proceeds to climb inside. And this is a female character. Uh, let's call her, let's call her Randy. And Randy, as she's climbing in, she falls down. We cut to a side shot. She stands up. She goes, Peter, I got great news. He doesn't really say anything. He goes, uh, look what I have. I have got Van Halen tickets. And she points to the Van Halen ticket. It's 1984. And she goes, oh, look what else I have. And she points to the palm of her hand. And she's got two. And he's like, whoa, uh, what is it? And he cut closer. And it's two little tabs of, um, of acid and purple microdots, which was kind of, um, you know, circulating around in 1984. And the little purple micro dots, I don't remember exactly what the pattern's like, but these little purple micro dots are lifting off the blotter paper and uh, kind of popping, you know, just some weird little activity there. So now we go into a different scenario where it's a group of kids and they're looking down towards the camera. The camera's on the ground looking up. And you cut to the reverse angle and you can see that there is uh, a puddle. Everybody's like, oh, do it, do it now. And there's sort of, this character's dropped his acid into a puddle and everybody's sort of debating whether he should do it or not because he's still at school, it's only lunchtime. So he picks up the blotter paper and they're like, oh man, you gotta do it now or it's not gonna be good later on. And the other guy goes, no, you can't do that. We got math class this afternoon with Mr. Stagg. And so they're all having this little debate and they're laughing. And meanwhile, as they're arguing, he sort of, he drops both of the, uh, the little hits of acid. And everybody points at him and goes, oh no. You know, it's a little too early in the afternoon to be dropping acid. But you know, he, this character didn't want to waste it. So he's in for a little bit of a wild ride, I guess. So about an hour and a half or two hours later, you know, he's sitting in Mr. Stagg's math, or math class, and this is him in the back of the room. And he's uh, kind of starting to experience, you know, the first stages of, uh, of the LSD. And this is Mr. Stagg. He, he looks a little bit like Lincoln, that's what I recall. And he was going on about Pythagoras and A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And then somehow his, this is his perception of Mr. Stagg and his beard starts growing and the whole frame starts to get kind of skewed and more exaggerated as he's going on about Pythagoras and all this. Uh, and then we cut to this guy and he's uh, starting to trip balls basically by now. And, uh, you know, the whole background starts to kind of um, distort and kind of and swim, I, su I suppose is a good way of describing it. You know, uh, the, the perspective lines start to bend and, and uh, he's, and then he starts laughing uncontrollably. And everybody in the classroom is wondering what's up with Peter, except for his buddy who was outside by the puddle and he knows exactly what's up with Peter. Anyways, that's the scenario. And then uh, everything kind of goes, uh, kind of glitches out Kind of like TV static, I guess, is the way I, I imagined it. And then we go to a different scenario. Um, it's sort of like a first person walking towards uh, a door. And um, this is something very typical of, you know, uh, of my work. I often do stuff in, like, first person. So, I mean, these will be cuts. But, you know, there will be a bit of movement as the camera pushes towards the door. And uh, I don't know if there's going to be knocking or maybe if the door's a little bit ajar. At any rate, the door gets pushed open 
and the door opens up. Uh, it's the landing of a house, and you could it reveals uh, this kind of raging house party, which is in full swing. And uh, the character, there's two characters. There should be two. Um, they kind of enter the house party, and as they go up the stairs, there's a guy lying on the top of the stairs, and he's um, got spaghetti kind of uh, majestically draping out of his mouth uh, down the stairs. And, um, you know, it's sort of uh, it's supposed to look a little disturbing. And meanwhile, he goes into the house party and sort of pushing through the crowd. Quick little cuts. He looks over this way and uh, there's a guy uh, banging a girl in the bathroom. And there's another guy who lights his fart on fire and and then he lights the curtains on fire. Later on, he's sitting in a chair and everything starts to get stretched out, like the depth of his hands and his legs as he's just kind of sitting there, kind of tripping out. Meanwhile, the house party's happening all around him there. And this girl comes up, she comes up to him and kind of proceeds to sort of um, kind of sit in his lap. And uh, it's just kind of a nice little interaction between him and this girl here. And um, she takes a sip of her beer and then she takes a drag and she's looking at him. She goes to get up and then she goes to sort of lead him by the hand through, through the party somewhere. So um, at one point they pick up you know, her friend, uh, let's call her Joe Beth. So Randy and Joe Beth are leading this character, Peter, uh, towards the towards the the bathroom. I don't know if this should be a bathroom or a bedroom. At first I drew it a bathroom, but I kind of changed it to a bedroom after. So they they kind of walk, they lead him into the bathroom and he walks kind of into the frame and into the room away from the camera. And then they shut the door and, you know, the party's just kind of continuing outside here for a moment. And we cut inside the room. Again, I thought this would be better if it's a bedroom. And they're kind of making out, and uh, the the other girl is sort of standing by the door here, and then they sort of they sort of topple into the onto the mattress here, and um, she's kind of involved, kind of around the perimeter here. But these two are kind of making out, and I mean, there's a bunch of weird little cuts in here. I'm not sure how we get from here to here, but I kind of like that kind of sexy little drawing. Uh, with or without underwear, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm actually not sure about, you know, that cut there, but I just put it in there. I'll figure that out later. So, I mean, he's kind of, um, he's kind of caressing her, um, caressing her as they're kissing. And the other girl, she kind of uh, grabs his pants and pulls pulls his pants down. and um, And then she pulls her breast out. I mean, I'm actually not sure about all these shots, but they're, they're kind of fun little sexy drawings. Anyways, at some time later, um, he leaves the room. Uh, he leaves the girls in the room. And I guess they're getting dressed or whatever. His shirt is kind of disheveled and his fly will be open and everything else. So, I mean, he's really tripping balls by this point. And he's going through the party. He thought, he's, he thought, he thinks, okay, well, I got to go find my friend uh, Darren. And he finds Darren uh, at some point, you know, um, Darren's looking at a wall somewhere in the party. And he goes, hey, Darren, I've been looking all over for you. Uh, are you are you OK? And he goes, uh, yeah, um, I was just looking and staring at this wall here. And he goes, look how flat it is. It, you should try it. And he's like, what? what? What do you mean? Try it. It's just a fucking wall. And he looks back and he sees. Randy and Joe Beth here, and he says, uh, and he sort of says, uh, you know, I, I, maybe we should get more involved with the party here. And um, the girls wave at him. And then he kind of wanders over, and they kind of embrace in this kind of sloppy hug. And meanwhile, the camera cuts back to Darren, and Darren goes, I need to go. And Darren basically was going to that dark place. So he walks off screen, revealing 
uh, Peter and, and uh, the two girls there. And he goes, what do you mean you got to go outside? And he says, hold on, I better go with you. So he pulls on his jacket and he runs after him. And then the two, two of them, now they're outside underneath the streetlight. And it's pissing with rain and they couldn't be more miserable. Uh, and he's sort of saying, Look, uh, are you ready to go back in like yet? Uh, and Darren says, he kind of looks, you know, with this crazed look in his eyes and he says, I got to run. And then he takes off like this and he goes, run. Well, what do you mean? The party's this way. And Darren, it's no use. Darren takes off on a sprint and, uh, Peter's watching, uh, Darren sort of taking off into the distance and then he looks back. And, you know, this is the house party from outside, from a distance away. And he looks into the window, and these are his two friends, Randy and Joe Beth, and they're, they're basically having a pretty good time in the party. And, uh, you know, Peter obviously would rather be in the party than outside getting wet. So he's kind of uh, sort of torn in between what he should do, and meanwhile Darren's getting further and further away in the distance. And so he decides to go running after Darren. And then uh, I guess the camera kind of glitches out again. And that's the end of the scenario. And then I have this last little bit here where this little character walks in, into the screen and he says, hey, kids, can you guess what Darren did wrong today? And then he, there's a pause, you know, to wait for the kids to respond. And he says, that's right. He dropped his acid way too early and had a bad trip. And then he's going to impart some, some helpful advice here. And he says, next time, try having a couple of beers first. Um, and don't smoke too much pot until you're starting to come down. And save some pot for later, because it's always nice to have a, have a toke in the morning when you're starting to come down off the acid. And it's probably not good to go running around too much because you could hyperventilate and fall down like an asshole. And then, um, and then it glitches out again. And then I guess we go back to black and you hear the voice of uh, Peter's friend, the girl's voice saying, Peter, in a sing-songy type voice, Peter, Peter. And then that's the end of it. Okay, so that's my story. And... Uh, you know, I was kind of thinking uh, maybe I should uh, spend some more time on the thumbnails, but I was kind of thinking that I wanted to get this edit out, and I was sort of feeling that pressure. Um, I'm probably going to go back and revisit some of the drawings, and there will probably be another update next week. Okay, so now let's go to our comments section. Uh, this is from my friend Ryan Lovelock. Are each of these short stories little nuggets of ideas that you gradually developed over time? Or do you just have some flash or vision in your head of the whole film that you jot down in a single long writing thumbnail session? Well, if you recall back in the first episode, which was called Nothing, um, I had some short stories that I had written. And um, I did that a couple of Christmases ago when I had some downtime. And so I had sort of um, written, over the course of about a month, I wrote about 15 or 20 stories. Uh, with varying different uh, degrees of um, of quality, some of them were you know pretty bad, but you know I selected eight of them that I thought I wanted to expand on. So this is the first one of the eight stories that I was going to expand on. Thumbnails. Do you sketch out the whole film in a single session? Have you seen these scenes in your head while writing, or is there more exploration sketches that end up in the, on the cutting floor? Uh, yes. So I. Like I mentioned, I had a script, and I, um, I guess I have uh, more or less an idea for the scenes uh, when I'm writing it. And um, so as I just went through in the thumbnails, that was kind of the way I had seen uh, all the, uh, the entire film in my head. Um, and it always looks a little different when you draw it out. So it's always good... You know, just to get the thumbnails in there and format it and take a look at it and sort of see, you know, how it's working. I mean, uh, having having done that and looked at the whole thing, I can kind of see where I need to sort of focus on little sections and and stuff like that. But I, I kind of feel like I'm, I I kind of made a, a firm step forward in in uh, in doing those thumbnails. 
Animation. Will you be animating everything yourself, or will you be getting some help cleaning, in betweening animation? These uh, animating these things. Sometimes I find myself avoiding boarding full animation as opposed to limited animation, just because I can't do it myself. Now that's a great question because, um, I, I mean, having looked at uh, the thumbnails, uh, quite frankly, I'm a little terrified to really get into this because. Not only is it longer than I thought, but there's going to be some really difficult animation in there. So uh, in a way, that kind of scares me a little bit. Um, but I mean, at this point, I, I'm not going to let that limit um, the way I'm visualizing the story. I'm, I'm just kind of letting it be kind of the way I imagined it right now. And, and I guess I'll cross that bridge later. But uh, to make a long story short, I'm not really going to hire anybody unless I, you know, I make a bunch of money which I, I kind of doubt. So I, I think I'll probably end up doing the animation. I'll definitely, you know, the next uh, step, uh, I'll start to uh, transition into doing the layouts and the posing of the characters, and that'll sort of set me up for doing the, uh, the animation part of it. So, I mean, th this uh, will probably be going on for a while. Um, so, you know, there's going to be plenty of content here to look at. Okay, this is from my friend uh, Charlie. Robert, this is really wonderful and rare endeavor, sharing these nuts and bolts, the ups and downs of the long, uncertain creative process <coughs> while balancing the rest of your life and concerns. Meanwhile, it's helping you organize and push your next ideas and reach out and connect to a wide and in interesting community. Another valuable aspect of your process could be if you briefly touched on your setup, your software, production, and evolution of these chapters, the recording, editing, pickup, vo voiceover, uh, uploading, etc. We're also used to instantaneous access to the end results of creative efforts, but not the work uh, getting there. Thanks for all the years of an exemplary artist and human being. Well, that's, um, that's nice of you to say that, but um, I think... Uh, as an artist and as a human being, I'm very much uh, still, um, you know, kind of working on all that. I'm definitely a flawed human. But look, specifically, uh, I can talk about uh, my setup. I have a Cintiq um, and I have a, a Mac and uh, that's basically my hardware. I've got two screens that I have set up here. As far as software goes, um, you know, I pay for the um, the Adobe Master Suite. It costs me about sixty bucks American a month, and as you can see, I'm I'm using um, currently Photoshop and the Premiere, the editing program, uh, to put these edits together. I don't have a microphone, so I'm just sort of recording my voice into my uh, my iPad Pro right now, and it seems to be pretty good. I think the microphone's okay. But eventually, if I can make a bit of money, I'll, you know, pr get a proper mic. So I'm assembling, you know, the edits in, in Premiere. And um, eventually, you know, as far as the actual production goes, I'll probably be bouncing between uh, Photoshop, Premiere, and After Effects and doing the animation production in Photoshop. I, I mean, I just like it. Uh, a lot of people ask me about TV paint and all this kind of stuff, but I think I'm probably going to just continue using Photoshop and the Adobe Master Suite as I get into this. Stay tuned. This is from Lucas. I think I already wrote this in some other video, but have you considered doing a Patreon, uh, you know, for extra income and to be more available to dedicate more time to your personal projects? Well, you know, having said that, I, I just opened up the Patreon um, link and I started, um, I started to update, uh, update uh, my um, my Facebook and Instagram links on there, and my YouTube page. Now, I mean, I've been kind of going back and forth about uh, using Patreon. I mean, uh, I don't necessarily want to um, use that platform uh, to make money. I mean, although that would be nice. But I'm kind of, you know, I'm at a bit of a crossroads in, in regards to sharing stuff like the script. And as I start to get into production, uh, I'm not sure if uh, Instagram or Facebook or YouTube 
is going to be the best place to be sharing everything. So maybe it might make sense for me to sort of cross platform over to Patreon. But look, like I said, I opened it up and I started to drop in some of the information. It's going to take a little while to get it all sorted out, but I'll, you know, see how it goes and see if I want to share the link and just go from there. So stay tuned. Oh, this is a great comment. Uh, just to give you an idea of the, the kind of audience that I'm starting to sort of gather here. Uh, I'm really enjoying your videos and I didn't realize you were from Vancouver. I lived in the East Van in the 19, in the 90s and did a lot of acid. So I love that part. Anyways, thanks for sharing your methods and I'm going to be glued to your channel now. Well, um, you're welcome. It's absolutely my pleasure to, um, to, uh, you know, okay, well, let's face it. You know what I'm trying to do is, you know, I'm a huge Cheech and Chong fan and I love, um, movies like, uh, Dazed and Confused and, and Friday. I kind of love that pot humor. Uh, this particular episode has kind of drifted a little bit more into the psychedelic kind of humor, uh, with a little bit of uh, erotica mixed in there. So, you know, uh, I realize it's kind of a stupid story, but, you know, I'm not going after an Academy Award on this one. I'm actually doing the opposite. I want to make something that's, you know, pretty subversive, something that I don't think um, I would have an opportunity to do somewhere else. So I'm kind of leaning into, you know, the subversive aspect of this story. Um, mention that. Uh, end of the episode never disappoints. Uh, by the way, it took me a minute to find you on YouTube because I was looking for Robert Valley instead of Massive Swerve. Uh, you know, um, yeah, I'm not sure actually. I mean, I'd love to hear your feedback, but I don't know if I should, uh, have my channel called Robert Valley or if the, if it should be Massive Swerve. Um, for me, Massive Swerve is kind of, it's the name of, uh, of, my, uh, of my company. It's the name of uh, my self-published books. I've got a, a short animated film called Massive Swerve. So that's kind of my umbrella group. It just kind of made sense. It just kind of made sense that my channel would be called Massive Swerve. Yeah, I guess that's probably better. I don't know. I'm still kind of thinking about it. I mean, currently right now I've got about 700 and something followers. I mean, it's not really taken off as I had hoped. Uh, e easily, most uh, of all my, most of the activity is happening on Instagram. I mean, that's usually, you know, the social media that outperforms all the other uh, social media for me. So, um, I mean, I can't get my Twitter account going at all. And like I said, this uh, YouTube page is kind of languishing here and a bit of the unknown, but, um, you know, all my social medias are, are, should be sort of, uh, connected. So we'll see if I can get any traction on that. Uh, how often do you need to, how often do you need revisions or to rework a scene? Thanks again for sharing. Well, that's a good question. I mean, um, you can sort of see here. Uh, this is my document, and uh, I'm actually in the process right now of color coding things here in Photoshop, where um, the drawings that I'm kind of the most happy with, I'm kind of uh, leave blue or green. It's sort of varying different levels of uh, of happiness that I have here, or there's very various different degrees of drawings that I think are working uh, that I colored green. And, um, and then the blue ones are kind of like the next ones that I think are kind of working. Um, they just need to be fleshed out. Um, I didn't want to spend too much time on some of these drawings. Cause I mean, once I start to get in and it's going to take a while and, and the pro the, the purpose of these thumbnails is not to get bogged down with, uh, you know, details in the drawing. It's, it's just to get the overall flow of the story happening. And then I've got drawings like where this guy's lighting his fart on fire, you know, where it didn't quite work out. Um, and this one, I mean, it's kind of there, but, uh, you know, these are the drawings that I'm going to have to go back in and kind of rework. Um, that one, 
I'd say like at this point, the drawings are sort of uh, hovering at about uh, kind of a uh, 80 to 90 percent. Um, I'm sort of satisfied with the drawings as they are. If I could sort of get them all up to this level, I'd be pretty happy with that. So um, I think I need to spend probably another few days kind of going over some of the rougher drawings. And I kind of want to do that before I really get bogged down and in, in doing the layouts, which is all going to be taking place in Photoshop here. Um, I, I kind of want my uh, thumbnails to be a little tighter before I get into that. I mean, there's no hurry. I'm just trying to enjoy, enjoy the whole process. I know I'm not making any money right now, but I'm okay with that. You know, I'm, I'm trying to put like the, the pressure of making money out of my head and just trying to kind of, I'm just trying to enjoy these drawings because if, if you kind of enjoy your drawings, it'll sort of show in the artwork. That's kind of, you know, how I feel about this stuff. This is great. Thanks for sharing your process. Just the simple bit about how you're using reference gave me the permission on my own story. I'm boarding now. Uh, uh, permission on my own story, I'm boarding now and using a Stanley Kubrick shot for inspiration. I also love creating the content as you create the content. As for the content, man, this gives me so much inspiration to be to not to not be ashamed of the kind of stories we put out into the world. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting some great messages here, and, and I feel like I'm sort of I'm getting starting to create some engagement with people that are doing a similar thing as what I'm doing. Um, a lot of people uh, that follow my work, they're either animators or they are students. And a lot of the people are uh, similar in the same kind of uh, self-publishing or independent filmmaking that I'm interested in. And so that's why I'm going through this process of sharing uh, all the steps of, uh, the, um, of the creation uh, of, uh, in this case, you know, uh, a short film. And you know what? Uh, I know this is a stupid story, you know, but uh, like I said, I just wanted to lean into something that I kind of thought would be subversive just because, you know, I'm never going to get an opportunity um, to do this if I'm working for somebody else. So, you know, I just might as well just, you know, just kind of put it out there and just, let's just sort of see how whacked out I can make this story, you know. Um, so I'm kind of enjoying that. Uh, we'll buy your videos when they come out. Thank you. Uh, I think this should be first. First time I did acid was on Gravel Street. I used to live in New Westminster. Yeah, and it's the kind of people I'm gathering. Um, you know, the best of the best. <laughs> Thanks for the email. Hey, and don't forget to uh, send me all your LSD stories because I'd be happy to sort of uh, share them here. Uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll uh, remove your name to keep it anonymous. Okay, what else is going on? Okay, around, uh, around the internet, there's a few noticeable things happening. One is, look, Peter Chung has got an Instagram account finally. Um, I think he's only been on for a couple of two, three weeks. He's doing pretty good. He's already got 10.6 thousand followers. So, um, look, it's no secret. I mean, Peter was one of the... He's the guy that really gave me my, my start in animation and gave me, like, my first job. He hooked me up with that job and colossal pictures you know in san francisco so i owe peter a lot it's great to see him here on instagram i mean i got a funny story about peter you know we worked together off and on for several years and uh sometimes i'd visit him at his, at his house he lived in los angeles and uh at one point um you know i went away and i started to sort of develop my own style and i started to self-publish my own books and i felt like i was really starting to make uh, some progress with that stuff and so I kind of returned back to, to visit Peter with a new body of work that I, I kind of wanted to measure my work with his. So he, we kind of both pulled out our portfolios, you know, <laughs> and uh, he went upstairs with my portfolio and uh, he left me downstairs in the living room to sort of look at his portfolio. You know, is this pristine um, kind of leather bound portfolio uh, you know, that, you know, had a, a zipper. So I proceeded to start looking through the pages of the portfolio and, oh my God, like Peter's draftsmanship is, it's incredible. It is, it's, it's amazing to look at these drawings. And to be honest, when I look at Peter's work, it, it terrifies me a little bit. I mean, I get the same feeling looking at uh, Alberto's work, Alberto Mielgo. 
I don't know why. I just feel a little terrified. I mean, it, it's almost like it's 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 hard for me to believe that people can actually draw so at this level. So I noticed as I was looking through Peter's portfolio and, and being you know a little terrified that the lights started to dim and uh, some weird kind of weird music started to fade up in the background. <laughs> so he was kind of creating the mood of looking through his portfolio, which I thought was hilarious. I mean, it was, uh, you know, in contrast, I would say, you know, his portfolio would be like a mushroom portfolio. And if you, you looked at my portfolio at the time, you know, the pages, you know, they were basically, you know, they were sort of had beer stains on it and cigarette burns and they were all dog-eared uh, on the corners. And my portfolio, and it goes for the content as well, uh, was more of a um, a beer and weed portfolio. And his was kind of more of a mushroom portfolio. And I think that kind of uh, summarizes kind of the difference between my work and Peter's work. Okay, uh, Derek. Look who else has got an Instagram account. It's Derek. Derek Thompson. Derek Monster. So, yeah, again, another new person to Instagram. Just want to give him a shout out here. Um... Derek works at Pixar. He designed the frost whales in the um, in that ice episode for Love, Death, and Robots. So he's been hitting it pretty hard. He's good. he's definitely populated his Instagram page here. So I just wanted to give both Peter and Derek a little shout out. You know, go ahead, you know, and give these guys a follow. You won't be disappointed. And uh, I don't think I have anything funny to say here at the end of the episode. So um, you know, just a little heads up that the next episode um, I, I, I'll probably put behind a paywall and I'm getting my website redone. So um, I kind of, um, I'm thinking that as I start to transition from thumbnail into the layouts that I'm going to put a, a more sort of comprehensive kind of um, a tutorial together that's going to start to sort of go into some detail, into some depth about the process of, of kind of uh, taking these drawings to a more finished state. So um, I'll probably need uh, like an additional week or two to, to kind of put that together. And I'm going to make that available on my website. And um, I don't know, like five bucks, probably 10 bucks. I don't know if 10 bucks, if, if people are going to pay that much. But um, I don't know. Give me, give me your feedback. Tell me, you know, what would be a decent price for this sort of thing. And this is kind of how I'm sort of uh, thinking I might uh, 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 start to generate a little bit of income as I'm working on my own stuff. So those are my plans moving forward. Talk to you soon. And don't forget to leave those comments. I love the scathing comments. Don't be afraid to, uh, to tell me exactly what you think.